Good day. This is aging maven aficionado Amy K. Gaskin, and I'm joined today with Linda McDougall. So welcome to Ask Amy About Aging, and thank you for coming today, Linda. You're quite welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Anytime. I hope you come back more times as well. Um, today we're going to talk about some mobility devices, um, but first let's tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Oh, at 74 years old, there's a lot to tell, so we'll try to cut that down. Uh, currently, I am a senior massage therapist, a senior health advocate. I've got a master's in counseling psychology, so there's a whole range of things. I've worked with disabilities um, and now seniors with disabilities most of my life. So in a nutshell, there it is. <laughs> there it is. So um, what, what would you like to talk about today? Which mobility devices? Well, I'll give you a brief story as to why I talk about mobility devices. I find, first of all, that they are not being, seniors are not being educated about them at all. And they walk out of stores or buy them off the internet and they never know that they're not right for them or that they're not adjusted correctly for them. And this is happening across the country. Uh, I've done podcasts all over the place and everybody seems stunned that I'm just going, uh, this is not rocket science, guys. No. We, we used to do this much better. Right. <laughs> but anyway, in uh, the early 2000s, my ex-husband and I were stationed in Hawaii. Uh, there, I managed to fall down some stairs and break the little bone going to my little toe. I went to the hospital. We got me a plaster boot, and they sent me out with crutches. Well, I didn't know anything about those things at the time either. And they sent me out with crutches way too high. Oh, no. Hospital. <laughs> and that can do a whole bunch for your back and everything. I mean, there's a lot of, dis you know, when you were not wearing some or using something right, that can even cause more damage exactly. and cause you more falls. And it did. I fell and I fell and I fell. We at the time were living in a three-story skinny apartment in Hawaii. And so I ended up having to crawl up all the stairs and crawl wow. down all the stairs because I couldn't use the, the crutches almost at all because when they're high, they push you backwards when you try to use them at all. Oh, no. So there you go. I was going backwards. And I fell several times to the point that my ex and I went to a medical supply store to get me a walker. I fell going into the store because I went up their disability ramp because otherwise it was you're at the wrong angle because you're too high. Exactly. So I went down there as well, but that was my last fall. And then I got the walker and the walker was fine. I don't remember being told anything about the walker, but at the same time it was fine. So, <laughs> well, that has to be a certain height too. Yes. Um, so you're not stooped over. I was at the VA um, last week or the week before with a friend of mine, um, the VA hospital, and there was like three people that were using walkers and two of them, you could tell it was way too high for them. They could barely reach it. And I was like, man, I, cause I've seen proper walker use. So, you know, using the mobility device correctly is very important. Very, very important. And I see seniors here, at, I'm, I live in a senior complex where we are all live individually, but we're in individual apartments. But mm -hmm. but I've seen people use them like shopping carts and put their folded hands, folded arms, and walk like that. And I've seen seen them too high as well. If you got a lot of elbow bend, you're too high. Yeah, they're meant to come canes and walkers are meant to come to your wrist period, right. because they're they are meant to support you at your full height now if you're already bent your full height is going to be less than and you're going right. to but you still need to be very careful because you can accentuate that bend by getting the wrong low height one right and posture is you know when, when you the better posture you have and the more upright you are the easy it is on your spine to walk. Exactly. And that's one of my, I, I'm writing an online course about all this because yeah. I'm fed up with people not 
understanding what they're doing to themselves <laughs> or to their seniors, their loved ones. They don't know any better. No. You just think that the doctor at the hospital is supposed to give Linda the right stuff. So you're assuming that it's the right, right height. Um, yeah, because back in the day when I was a child, I, it's the only time I've been been on crutches. And I remember, you know, going back and forth with with the height. And, and they said, no, this you have to have it a certain and the arms have to be at a certain. And, and they went over it multiple times. Yep. I had a. One of the places that follows me on Facebook show, had a, showed a picture of a lady that was just one of their favorite ladies and she was mm -hmm. with the walker and I put on there, I said, you do know that her walker needs to be adjusted. And they and didn't. They go, they go, Oh yeah, we're, we're making it higher for her. I said, no, lower. <laughs> but, she wants but yeah, it doesn't matter what she wants as much as what is proper for her. If, if she wants it higher, then what she really needs is an upright walker. Yes. Rather than a st standard walker. Uh, so yeah, all, all this, they think, I've, I've seen so many people with their butts hanging out and they're leaning over a walker and the neck and the, the eyes want to level. So you're going like this and then you're going like this. So you look like a turtle. Yeah. And it, it damages the neck. Bees from that kind of stuff. And then you got the hunchback from walking in correctly with it. It, it just makes it a mess. And you shouldn't have to do that. No. Um, posture is taking care of your bones and your posture is should be one of your highest concerns going into old age. Right. And, and, and I can only imagine the older you get, the more important it is to make sure you maintain that. And then if we're given um, mobility assistive devices that are going to deteriorate that faster, that's not good. No. Then, then we'll be in a wheelchair next and then we'll be bedridden and then our life is a room. You know, we want to be able to go out and do things. So having things done properly is so much better. And the other thing when you get to wheelchairs is tons of people in the homes I I go to are in mobility devices, the 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 foldable wheelchairs. You're not supposed to live in those. Those are for trips to go to the grocery store, to go to the drugstore, whatever you're doing. They're for little outings. They're not to live in all day. And when you do that, it's like living in a director's chair forever. And it is totally gives you improper everything. And if you need side supports, I see so many seniors like this or like this. Yeah. Or even like this. <laughs> and there's there's tons of supports out there, but you have to have the correct wheelchair in the beginning. And you yeah. have to talk to Medicare to find out what those are because they'll only pay for certain ones. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine a transport chair that, you know, you, you would take to go to the grocery store or, you know, for a long visit would be totally different. Yeah, you can't put anything but pillows on the side. And I've seen the pillows, you know, just fold, basically. They're useless. Uh, whereas in a proper wheelchair, you can get all the supports you can imagine from head to toe. I used to run two uh, group homes for United Cerebral Palsy. And those people were all adults, all in wheelchairs with gear from head to toe as they needed. Right. And that's all available. But but to talk to people who work with seniors, they don't seem to know it. I don't know why. I do it, know. It makes no sense to me because those people are the ones that should know it. And exactly. you rely so much on senior living professionals to know what to do. But what I've found is that in senior living, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And so if you don't know about something, you should talk to others that do know about something and expand your circle um, because you need to be giving the seniors the right advice because seniors are counting on us. And, yeah. so, and so many people have segmented um, advice only. They can't give you advice on 100% of the things and that's okay. No one person is the export of all experts. 
we want we I mean, we want to surround ourselves um, with people that are smarter than we are, so we can learn more. And that's one of the reasons why I, I'm doing the Ask Amy About Aging podcast, inviting people that are smarter than I on different topics that I want to know more about, and I know others want to know more about. And I will tell you that um, when I taught when I worked at a place for mom, the, I had many calls a day. You know, mom fell, she's on crutches, she's in a wheelchair now, she's healing. Um, so. You know, that's what's going on. And we need to make sure these people are educated properly, especially our, our hospitals need to be sending people home, especially seniors or even individuals with disability, everyone, but it's primarily people that are seniors or aging, they're disabled already. If they're going to get a mobility device, you need to educate them on the proper use of them. I'm wondering if they're educated. Well, they have to be, you know, in order to be, um, and, and most of the time, every time I've ever gone to the hospital or had my daughters go to the hospital with, um, after sports injuries, they had someone come out and they took 15 minutes to explain and make sure the height was right and everything. I mean, um, because I'm, I'm five foot 10, so I'm tall. So, um, if, if, if I use the crutches, they have to be the tall person's crutches. It can't be the average person's crutches, you know, um, anything 5'10 and above. If I was 5'9, that would have been the other one, the other option. But when you're tall, you need the, the taller crutches. When my father had crutches, he had to have the tallest ones they make because he's six foot two. But they have to, you know, I mean, it, it would be stupid for them not to. I mean, you can't you can't be responsible to give out devices and not know how to explain how to use them. Oh, honey, it's done all the time. I had we need to put a stop to that. I had a six foot tall client that I met at her doorway to give her a massage. Yeah. She had just gone out and bought a walker and she was so bent over. I just looked at her and I said, this doesn't look right. Get in the house and we'll see what we if we can adjust it. It was only adjustable to my height, which is five foot four. And she, so she's six feet tall. She's six feet tall. Oh and my gosh. I talked to a, a friend of mine and and she just said it's such a battle to get any money back from Medicare if she can afford to just lose that money, have her go get, you know, one because otherwise she's gonna be stressed out fighting Medicare and that just isn't something she needs to do. Well, I'm sure the, the company should have been able to exchange it for the taller one. Maybe, but they're the ones that sold it to her as it was. So but, that's me. they didn't know or didn't care. No, they probably didn't care. It's probably the last one and they didn't care. I, I think part of the reason, and I could be wrong, this is just me talking out of my head, but I think part of the reason is when it comes to Medicare, the provider, whether it's a doctor or the medical equipment supply place, probably they don't get paid for at least a month, maybe even two. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they don't care. They want the cash, the cash paying customers that come in now that they get paid now. And the other ones they just want to get in and out. That's my theory. They shouldn't be okay if that's the problem. No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be um, certified as Medicaid, Medicare uh, special, but I'm sure it's because they don't get paid as quick or as much as they would for, um, for a cash paying client. Well, talking out of my head and out of a tiny bit of experience, I think a similar issue is with the homes and not correcting a lot of the problems that we were talking about because they are so afraid of liability and considering things like that restraints and things like that aren't necessarily restraints if you have a doctor's order that says so and so needs side supports somebody so and so needs the seat belt somebody right. whatever it is it's not a restraint then no but they it's a are safety strong. thing. And if you want to mitigate risk, you need to mitigate risk by following the doctor's orders. And this comes to play again because when you have a when you have a care circle, and that means anyone that loves or cares for you, that includes doctors, professionals, neighbors, anybody in your care circle, um, attorneys, they're all part of your care, whether it's your emotional care, your um, physical care, your well-being. 
they don't connect with each other. So the doctors are not talking with the um, people in the assisted livings, and they're certainly not talking to the home care people. So they're, they're not talking. And, and the doctors truthfully need statements from home care and home health who's, who actually visit with the um, with their with the clients and patients. And they also need input from the senior living communities. Because so many times when a senior goes to the doctor, they go by themselves. They don't want anyone to go with them because they don't want to tell the, they don't want the doctor to know just how bad they are because the doctor might suggest something they don't want, like, oh, taking my driver's license away. That And doctors are so pro-patient, they want to make sure that they do white, well by their patients that not to offend them, especially when they've been caring for them for 50 years, that they're not necessarily going to the adult child or going to the caregivers and say, tell me a little bit more on this story. Tell me a little bit more. They need to dig deeper. If the doctors had access to a note from a, from the assisted living saying this is what's going on, or a note from the home care person saying this is what's going on, or the home care person or the adult child could video in, or um, the assisted living could video in and, and give an input because the doctor might suggest a whole bunch of different things. The doctor probably has no clue what's going on at the assisted living either. You know, it, it's sad. We need to, we need to communicate more to do better for our seniors. Well, when I ran United Cerebral Palsy's group home, and this is a major difference between the developmentally disabled population and our seniors. And I find it, totally inappropriate the way it's done with our seniors. Mm -hmm. With United Cerebral Palsy, we had group meetings from everybody who cared about that client, had anything to do with that client, including that client. And we had those meetings like twice a year for each mm -hmm. client so that everybody had input and they made a, a, a living plan, basically, an individual service plan. And all you get in senior living is a nursing plan. Yeah, and, and that makes no sense to me because the goal is the least restrictive environment for a person. And what people want to maintain and live in age in place, right? They want to do that. And they want to maintain um, the, the best of their ability to do everything they possibly can for themselves. They don't want to sit down and have everyone do everything for them because the minute you do that, your life gets cut short. But... If we if we if we move someone into some place that's too high of a care for them in the beginning, they're going to deteriorate faster, and that's a fact. And um, we've also uh, they've, they've, there's actually been studies on things that when you when someone pushes to stay, you know, to be competitive and et cetera, and do things for themselves, they live longer. You know, as long as it's safe. But, you know, we want to make sure that we're, whatever someone calls home is safe. And we want to um, let seniors know that there are many different options out there where you can still be independent and you can still do everything that you want to do. But you have supervision. You have people around you that can make sure that if you do need help, you can get it. Because what happens is those people um, don't realize that all of a sudden you um when you're a senior, you eat less because you're not as hungry, so you're not reminded to eat. Um, and then you become malnourished very quick, or you don't drink because you're not thirsty, so you're not drinking enough water. And so all those things cause a rapid downfall. Um, so if you're in, that makes it more difficult. But yeah, communication, I think, is key, and the doctors need to communicate with um, the senior living and the home care and the adult child, and they need to do it more. And because that way we're going to have less accidents. Because uh, you know, if if I if I was able to tell a doctor that my mother was given crutches that were too high and I had to adjust them down, he would probably have been like, "Well, who gave her the crutches in the first place? And why didn't those per per person tell her that?" And you know, if you and your husband had never had crutches before, how are you supposed to know that they were too tall for you? Other than it was weird, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the doctor at the hospital gave it to me. So, and, and you assume when the hospital gives something to you that they're going to show you how to do it the right way. Yep. So. But, I, but back to those meetings, one of the things that was so good is you got everybody's input. Right. And you had a at that meeting who knew every client and knew their little foibles and all that. Right. And she take whatever came from that meeting that was appropriate and tell the doctor. 
Exactly. I mean, that's that's the whole thing is that a, doc a doctor doesn't necessarily need to sit in on the meetings, but they need to review the notes from the meetings. Um, just like they review the notes um, from their prior, their hospital, your patient's prior visit. So you remember what happened the last time you talked to the client. Um, you know, uh, one of the hats that I wear is with Family Care Space. And um, there's actually data for doctors in both the Family Care Space at Community Platform and the Family Care Space at Home Platform that would absolutely positively benefit the doctors to know. Um, and when you talk about mobility, for instance, um, you can find out how long it takes a person to go from the bed to the toilet every morning, right? How long it takes for them to go to the toilet to the kitchen. Um, and you can see a routine and you can see when the routine starts to change. So they used to get up at 715 and use the toilet by 720 and then be in the kitchen before 730. Well, now all of a sudden they're not getting to the kitchen until 745. And then all of a sudden, you know, one morning they don't get to the kitchen at all. Um, we, we know how long it takes. And the same thing in a senior living community. If someone's apartment is, you know, a three minute walk to the cafeteria or to the dining hall, then all of a sudden it's taken them 10 minutes. There's a problem. Something's going on, right? Something's going on. And with the technology, you can actually see that. And so, if the, the, you know, the more the more information we can give a doctor, the more information that everyone's on the same page, the better off the senior is. And when you don't have the information, then, you know, I don't, I don't understand why they, I mean, you have to have a report from a doctor to get into assisted living. So the doctor has to do a physical for you, right? To get, to get you into assisted living, but the assisted living does not, is not required to give a report from each of the residents to the doctor every month or once or twice a year to see changes because that would give the assisted living, um, the seniors and the assisted living a better, um, better picture of what's going on, and and then everyone is is, is involved. Just like you had those meetings with the, with um, your the individuals um, with developmental disabilities twice a year, it should be mandatory for the same thing with seniors that are in in in, in care in a congregate situation as well. Well, and when we made an individual service plan, <clears throat> we would. Have roll it out, and if it wasn't working in some way, we had a QMRP, which was what they were called at the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the specialist who wrote the plans and who saw the plans executed, then they would be working with the client and anybody else who was in needed to revise that plan into something that might work. Exactly. And no, it doesn't happen. And I'm thinking that, you know, with with the younger people, even with if the, and I could be wrong, but with younger people with developmental disabilities, it could be um, the changes aren't happening as quick as they are with seniors. So I'm thinking with seniors, it might even be need to be done quarterly. Now, we had seniors as well as young, younger folks. So we had the whole gamut where I work. That's good. But Yeah. It, it, do the seniors deteriorate faster than someone with disabilities, developmental disabilities, for instance? I don't know. I'm asking. It would depend on what their disability was and how mm -hmm. degenerative it was. Um, we had folks that lived well into their 70s and 80s, just like fairly, fairly normal folks. Right. So it, it would depend. Um, I don't remember any of them dying while I was there, but I'm sure several of them are passed by now because yeah. I haven't been there in 20 years. But, but yeah, and I had some really neat people who were seniors then. <laughs> but they're also getting proper care and having yeah. meetings and stuff like that. So it's no wonder that they're, they're having longer lives than they would have if they didn't have the care and they didn't have a team of people that says, you know, this is what's going on. This is what we suggest. Um, and I think that our seniors um, do get left behind because um, they're, they're not getting, I mean, um, I think it's, it went, oh, well, they have Medicare. So we're doing that for them. So that's it, we're done. They got Medicare or they got Social Security, but Social Security is something that we earned and we gave you. And now you're giving it back to us so that we can retire. It's not a gift from you. It's not a gift from the government. So 
I think that they um, we need to do more for our seniors. I do. Oh, me too. I'm, I am a senior and I plan on staying out of every place I possibly can <laughs> for as long as I possibly can. Uh, I We can cover on another segment diet and the, what happens with seniors with the with the lessening of appetite and the lessening of drinking, we can cover all sorts of things because that's a whole nother bailiwick of mine is that we're not feeding them right. We're not watching them well enough. We're not doing a bunch of things in the feeding. And I mean, we lose our ability to extract nutrients as mm-hmm. well. So if we're eating less, drinking less, and we're, we're not digesting as well. Excuse me. Give them the best foods, the best organic. Let's get let's get some things going so that we're replacing. And then we're talking, and this is another episode as well. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about nutrient thieves in your medicine cabinet. And most of these people are taking multi-meds, which are depleting their nutrients as well. Right. So if they're not eating well and they're not drinking well, they're going to deteriorate and they're not going to be able to age in place. And so and people that, oh, I've, I've eaten the same thing I've eaten my whole life. Well, yeah, but now you're a senior and now it's even more important to make sure that you maintain and you exercise and you have a, you know, well-developed, you know, you know, spiritually, um, socially, physically, as well as, you know, eating. Um, it's not just, you know, important. To, it's, you have to have a roof over your head, obviously, but you, you need to have those basic needs met on all of them because you can't just sit alone by yourself. I'll say, and I have a dog sitting in the chair next to me and I have a dog on my lap. There they you go. Nice. They make me walk. That's <laughs> right. They have, and, and pets are very important. Um, in fact, there's a lot of shelters that, you know, once, they, once in a while they'll do an event where they um, bring the dogs to the senior center or, or et cetera. And uh, that having a companion is very important. As long as you can take care of them, which obviously you can. Um, and there's many assisted livings out there that will allow you to take your pet in. And some don't, but um, so most, some of them do. And you just have to find out. So, I mean, there's always something for everyone. Well, thank you for coming in today, Linda. And I look forward to our next um, podcast again in the future. Again, this is Aging Maven aficionado, Amy K. Gaskin, with Linda McDougall today. um, And we discussed mobility devices. So thanks again. Bye. What's your puppy's name? This is Chicory. Hey, Chicory. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, Linda. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you.